Well, good morning. Today is Friday, November 8th, and we have one birthday today. Today is Lydia Gunther's birthday. So, Lydia, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lydia. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Well, I hope you have a great birthday because you're the only one that told me it was your birthday today. Um, <clears throat> I don't have any plans for today. Well, I've already come back from the dermatologist where I didn't get some great nose. I had to get a biopsy done on that little thing on my, I thought it was just a wart. And he looked at it and he says, oh, we're going to have to do a biopsy on that. And so then he asked if I take any blood thinners. And I said, no, other than I take a baby as two baby aspirins every day in the morning. Oh, that should be fine. So then they numbed it up. And then she put the needle in and she took the biopsy, took whatever she needed to take. And then she couldn't get it to stop bleeding. And she says, oh my, she says, we're going to get this on your sweatshirt. Blood stains. We can't have that happen. So she and then she kept putting all this gauze on it. And she said, uh, "So you're not on any blood thinners?" And I said, "No, I didn't realize my blood was so thin. Maybe I don't even need to take the baby aspirin." And I said, "No." So she kept doing it and doing it and doing it, and it would, it's pressing on it. And she says, "Finally, she said, you know, I'm going to have to cauterize it." And I said, "Okay." So I had to move. So she's holding on as I'm walking, and we had to. I had to get up on the table so she could cauterize it, and then she put the band aid on it. So she said, "I'll get the results," which seems like a long time. She said. Um, 10 to 10 to 14 days. I don't know if they just tell you the, the long amount of days. Who's that out there? Oh, it's Emily. Emily next door. Um, I, I Sometimes I think they tell you the long time so that you don't call them and bug them. That's the only thing I can think of. Uh, he didn't seem overly concerned, but he, you know, wanted to do his due diligence to take the biopsy. So I said, okay. So I'll pray that it's good results for me because I don't know if I can handle anything right now. And then, once again, gave me a little zap for my wart. I said, this is a persistent thing. He said, well, sometimes it takes a couple treatments. I said, this is the fourth, or is it the third? This is the third, <laughs> third treatment. I said, and it's still there. He said, well, we'll keep, we'll keep at it. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, because you get paid every time you zap someone. <laughs> of course, you're going to keep at it. If it doesn't come off this time, I'm just going to realize that it's a determined wart that's just a saying, I'm staying. No matter what you do, I'm not leaving. So, um, yeah. We got that to deal with. And then uh, Christy went to a funeral at my old parish that I used to go to. And uh, she, Christy doesn't go to church. Um, none of my children go to church. That's sad, but they don't go to church. But anyway, um, she said, I can see why you left that parish. <laughs> and I said, uh, yeah. She says, he was awful. She says, she says I don't know, because uh, Aaron is black. So... Uh, she said a few family members die, and so then, and I don't mean this as a prejudicial or anything like that, but uh, black services, which I've been to, and white services are two entirely different types of services. And uh, the, I find myself with white services, they tend to reflect more on the religion aspect of it, which I don't have a problem with, but they tend to reflect more on the religious aspect of the funeral, whereas when you go to a black funeral, uh, they more focus on the person that just passed, which I think is we have the, the, but I don't know. Anyway, she said that uh, nobody was impressed with the priest, which is one of the reasons I left the parish. It was because of her, him. But uh, they said what they couldn't believe is um, he does not believe in receiving the Holy Eucharist in your hands, which you are allowed to do as long as you're reverent with it. And uh, so there was two people that took the host in their hands and took a step aside and started walking back, which you're supposed to, the proper procedure is you're supposed to take it in your hands and then immediately put it in your mouth. And uh, these two people, I guess, didn't do that immediately. And uh, he stepped out of line and went and followed them and stood in front of them until they put the uh, Eucharist in their mouth. Um, I just don't think that's a good impression to make to somebody. I, I, don't, I don't know. That's just me. I, I just... I just didn't think that that was, I mean, I understand part of his reasoning for that, but uh, I know that when I was going to the services there, when he was, uh, well, he's still there, but when he was officiating over the masses, uh, he would, wouldn't, I was surprised, I'll, I'll put it this way, I was surprised he put it in their hands, because um, he will, refuses to put it in your hands. So that kind of surprised me that he even put it in, in their hands, because if you go up there with your hands cupped the proper way, uh, he'll just... He'll just shake his head no, and he won't give you the host until you open your mouth and he can put it on your tongue. There's a whole list of reasons why I left this parish. I went to another parish, and um, 
they were just like oh, 1950s, all doom and gloom. And that I like to get joy out of going to services. So um, the church that Denise goes to, I'm not a member of, but uh, I do like that one, St. Hubert's. It's in, um, I don't know what city that would be considered. Was that uh, Harrison Township or Clinton Township or whatever? But um, I know where it's at. Obviously, I go there. <laughs> I don't go every Sunday. Uh, I'll tell you that I don't go every Sunday. But uh, I do find um, fulfilled when I leave Mass. But I never, the reason I stopped going to my parish is because I would get so aggravated and so, not hateful, but just think such bad, and I'd be so annoyed and I wasn't getting anything out of the Mass. And so I, I thought to myself one time, what's the point of going when you're, you're leaving so angry? Because I would leave angry. And you're not supposed to leave Mass angry. You're supposed to leave Mass happy. you know. So, And when I go to St. Hubert's, I leave Mass happy. So I'm going to, I don't know. It's, it's far, too. It's not close. It's probably a good 20, 25-minute drive. But, you know, it's... What else am I going to do? It's still within my 30-minute drive. <laughs> it's within my 30-minute drive time. So, And then uh, Mary was so funny. Mary was in such a good mood yesterday, and it was so good. And I was so happy to see how much progress she's made. Um, I see her every once in a while. I talk to her every day. But um, I really don't get over there to see her much unless I'm bringing her to the doctor or bringing the dog to the vet or something like that. She still hasn't brought the dog to the vet. She's still hemming and hawing on that. But anyway... Um, when she came out, I was expecting her to come with her walker because when you get to the hospital, there's wheelchairs right at the door. So you don't have, there's tons. It was like, it's like if you ever went slack car racing, not slack car racing, go-kart racing, and you get there and all the go-karts are all lined up and everybody just has to hop in a go-kart and then take off. <laughs> That's how it is with the wheelchairs. They're all lined up. <laughs> so, uh, we don't have to bring a wheelchair, but when she came out, I really thought she was going to come out with a, um, walker. And she came out with a cane. She was walking with a cane. She was doing really well on the cane, too. So she got in the car, and then when we went for the visit, um, you know, they did their normal testings and stuff like that that they had to do. And then they said, well, we need to go for a walk. And uh, I said, oh, we left her cane in the, uh, in the, in the car because we were in the wheelchair. Mary says, I don't need the cane. I can walk. As long as somebody's beside me, if I get tired, I can grab onto them. She walked down, down the hall and back with, uh, without any assistance. So I was really happy with that. I really was. She did get a little teary uh, at one point because, um, she, first of all, she's scared, as anybody would be. I, I, anybody would be scared. She, uh, so, so she's scared about the procedure. But she's more scared that she's not going to live long enough to get the procedure done. And, uh, and the doctor was very uh, re reassuring, saying, no, you're not that bad. I mean, you're bad, but you're not that bad. And uh, I don't think we're going to have a problem. So she said, you, you'll be fine. So that kind of put Mary a little bit at ease. But then when she was talking to the doctor about her hallucinations, she always is seeing like bugs and worms and stuff like that everywhere she looks. And uh, I said, well, th there's no, you know, like she'll say, oh, can you take that away? There's worms there. And I go, Mary, there's no worms there. She was seeing that. But the, uh, <clears throat> what do you call it? What was it she said she saw on the on her walker? Was it a muskrat with a hat with a little monkey on a, car, on a leash? <laughs> oh, and she, she really does. She really did see these. And that, she gets that when she, her ammonia levels are too high. So that's why they have her testing her blood once a week. So she's got to go once a week to get her blood tested. So she can go right next door. So that's good. The weather's been so nice that uh, uh, t uh, Don has just been able to just push her over in the wheelchair over to the... Because uh, walking with even with the walker or the cane would be too much of a walk for her. It's close, but not that close. So, and then the, we thought, I really thought I was going to get home before it was dark because her appointment was at 3 o'clock and they took us back there at 2.45 and the doctor came right in, no problem, right in. But her actual exam was about 45 minutes. And then we had to go down to the lab because she had to get blood work. So we had to wait for that. So we didn't actually leave the hospital till like 4 o'clock. And then rush hour traffic from downtown Detroit, forget that. We made it going I think we made it in like a half an hour, and coming home it took us almost an hour to get home. So we, I didn't, I dropped Christy off at her house at five five o five, yeah five o five, and then um, Mary, Mary lives about five minutes away. So by the time I got all settled and left Mary's house, it was five twenty, and uh, the sun goes down at five fifteen, five seventeen. <laughs> it was getting dark, and then they're doing construction in front of Mary's uh, facility. And so uh, 
you can't, it's hard to get out because people, even though they got to wait and there's no place for them to go, you think that they would leave the driveway open so that people could get in and out of the driveway. At least you're not going anywhere. You're getting one car length ahead farther. So I had to inch my way out in front of people, hoping that nobody would hit me. So I did get out and it was dark. <laughs> it was dark. <clears throat> it was, it was a scary ride home. I'm going to tell you, I got home about uh, five to six and it was like, I don't know. I don't understand why my vision's so bad. You know, it doesn't seem as bad when I'm in the passenger seat, but when I'm driving, I don't know. Maybe it's just added pressure that I could hit somebody or something. I don't know. But uh, uh, it was it was a scary ride home. But I made it. It was fine. You know. So then I just uh, watched some TV last night, and the book is. I don't know what I did with the book. Oh, I left it in the car. I forgot it in the. The book is not the the book is not the movie that I saw on Netflix. The thing I saw on Netflix was one perfect. One perfect couple, and this is the perfect couple, and it's entirely different premise. This is um, this book is about uh, this girl that's um, living with her boyfriend, and he's an aspiring actor, but he's not doing really well. And she's some kind of a lab assistant um, working on a grant, trying to prove the theory of the other guy that was just before her. And so she kind of realizes that he kind of fudged his results to make himself look good, and that they really can't be matched. So she spent almost a whole year trying to match his results, and she can't do it. And then she's come to the conclusion he kind of cheated. But in the meantime, her boyfriend's uh, agent si tells her that she needs to go on this, um, he needs to go on this thing to enhance his career, uh, like a reality show where couples get dropped off at a deserted island. And he's trying to talk his girlfriend into going, he said, because it's, it's a 10-week program, a 10-week show. And she said she can't get 10 weeks off. And he said, well, your grant's going to end and blah, 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 and all that. So that's all, that's as far as I got in the book. So she had put in her notice, and uh, her professor, whoever, said that she could work on her things on her own. So she's planning on taking it with her to the deserted island. How she's going to do that without a computer, I don't know. <laughs> I haven't got that far into the book. So um, anyway, just working on my wait for the weekend. going to do the best I can, not screw up, hopefully. No, not going to screw up. I'm just not going to screw up. I'm going to do. I'm going to do well. Um, and get back on track. That's it. That's all I can do. So, yeah, that's going to do it. Thank you for your prayers for Mary. They're obviously working. Look at she's walking without a cane even, so she's doing really well. We did find out, which I was very surprised. We did ask. Um, they said that when she has the surgery, they didn't say how long the surgery would be because obviously they can't tell you that. But I think it's like six or eight hours, I think they said originally, but she wouldn't say any how long it takes yesterday. But she said, you're usually in intensive care for two or three days, up to five, depending on how well you did. And then you go into a regular room and you're in that room from five to 10 days, depending on how well you do. And then you go right home. We thought Mary was going to go back to assisted, uh, a, like a rehab center. And they said, nope, you go right home. You go right home. We don't leave, let you leave until you, we feel that you can handle yourself at home. As long as you have a support system at home. Well, she does. So um, that was kind of shocking news for us. I don't know why we thought, I thought just to get her strength back and stuff, but I guess they work on that in the hospital before she goes. But So we're just praying that she, praying for the person that don't has the unfortunate circumstances that they have to be in a place that they have to donate their organs, but also pray that Mary gets some organs. And so um, prayers for the donor and the donee. How's that sound? So, uh, that's going to do it. Like, comment, subscribe, and share, and let's talk again tomorrow. Thank you.